<laughs> We're all cheersing and Matt's studying uh, over here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, grab it on the brisket, episode 194, all about bark formation. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? It's bark. It's oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. I can't do I that. Like I can't a, even like, I feel like bark. There's a fucking right, corny right, like, who yeah. let the dogs out yeah. <laughs> joke there. Who I'm let like, the I'm not dogs out? Oh, okay. I'm not doing that. Who? Who? Uh, Haters going to hate. Yeah. Yeah, so hey, uh, everybody, welcome to the Grab the Brisket Podcast. Today we're deep diving into the world of smoking briskets and other meats and discussing the importance of bark formation. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of, a lot of. But how uh, important is it? I, right now, it seems like it's very important. Everybody, just, all they give a shit agree. about is just the bark. I think it's important. I think, I think it's like a, it's like when you look at a, a film or a B roll of anybody's brisket. It's the first thing that anybody looks at, and on top of that, uh, I think that the fact that like you have these like generic barks, and everybody goes ham over, and you're like, "That's not good." Right. right. It, it, it's a whole like it used to be I, the smoke I, ring, right? That's right. It used to be the smoke you're ring. You're right. Now it's yeah. all about the bark. It's yeah. like yeah. Um, I've tasted plenty of, uh, I'm yeah. specifically briskets. That tasted really good, but the bark looked no like bark. shit. It's like right. anemic right. and wet. It's it was right. wet. Listen, yeah. seasoned I, up. We have made plenty of briskets mm-hmm. oh, 100%. where it just looked like a wet, just like a right. wet <laughs> shoe, right? <laughs> you may have wrapped that it one up. It tastes early. phenomenal. Oh, you taste it and you're like, I want some more of that. But it's place. like a wet shoe when you're looking at mm-hmm. it, like, eh. But if you, don't, if you don't have that iconic, like just salt, peppery, it's pepper. Basically, it's pepper. The whole thing right. that gives you that nice, yeah. just crusty bark is the pepper. If you put way too much of the other fine seasoning right. uh, on there, where there's the garlic powders and the the yeah, it's the, the coarseness too, right? Like, like you gotta that. have that. that th- those those salt th- those seasonings are just what would you call non soluble. They do not dissolve, so they just stick they just there maintain and they just stay there unless you get that temperature yeah. enough. And that the outside of the brisket high enough to where it just kind of dries out, and you create this like dry, flaky bark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but that, that's it. Seems all over social media, if you got that nice bark, everybody just goes ham over it. It doesn't matter if it like tasted like shit yeah. or anything like that. Nobody cared. Nobody right. cared. Well, that's, you know that, why? That's everything on social media, right? Because it had plenty of salt. No, but you're right. You're, just, John, is it you're pretty? exactly Does right. Does it look pretty? Yeah. You're going to get a million views. It Am I good? Like, it could taste like Am a I shoe, good? like you said. Yeah. But, yeah, that's social media for that's you. That's what happens. Yeah. Uh, but before we jump too far into it, should we talk about our weeks or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, uh, so, you know, hey, the, the, the people that are listening, tuning, tuning in for the very first time, listening to the Grab of the Brisket, <sighs> thank you. Hey, How many welcome people in. are tuning in for the first time? Raise your hand. Like seriously, hey, yeah. tell us, tell us like this is my first time. I will never listen. Or tell me, hey, this is my first time. Exactly, I'm definitely yeah. going in for episode one or episode six or something. Right? right. There's that tell one, me something. There's that one dude. This at is that, your one at episode. That one work type yeah. deal, and he just like straight to raise his hand. Yeah, right. he's a serial <laughs> killer. And they're looking at him like a serial killer. Why are you, shit. Doing, Why are you raising Jeff? your Jeff? hand? What are you doing? Why, right? <laughs> hey, yeah, That's don't crazy. call on me for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, hey, grab your favorite drink, grab your beer. I mean, I, l- let's yeah, uh, let's get into four this. Let's deep dive into this whole world of barbecue. But first, hey, uh, how's everybody's week been? We just got off of a nice uh, playoff weekend. <laughs> say oh, nice, geez. hell we of a weekend. Nice. Yeah, great yeah, we football. Did. Yeah, I say it's nice. When, for when, some it come, when it comes to football, we did right. We, we had, had a, a beautiful time. weekend. We, we had a beautiful weekend of football. We had a beautiful weekend of just. Getting together, hanging out, like cooking food. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, dude, we had the best freaking weekend. Mm-hmm. But my team didn't prevail or prevail or whatever else. Produce. It's fine. It just is what it is. Like, I'm not going to be a hater. I don't care. I know John's team's going <laughs> to suck. Right. Are you, you going to root for the Eagles? I, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> are you going to root for the Eagles next and, week? NFC East got a prevail. Oh wow! No, okay. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we're, uh, we're not going to no, dive listen, into sports we're, here. We're not going crazy. I'm just saying, uh, yes, 100, percent John. I will root for your team because you're a friend of mine, and I have a lapse in judgment. <laughs> I salute uh, you. Yeah, but Mr. American football. But player. I will say this: 
I hope your team like stumbles and yeah. stubs a toe or something. John was, Somebody <laughs> stubs a freaking toe around. John you. was mentioning. They're so red hot. Yeah, John was mentioning earlier we were over at the house and uh, we set up a live. So we did a little TikTok live and we we're going just like trying to set up the camera. Hey, hey where, where do we want to set up whatever? And yeah. uh, I got the back wall where I have a bunch of like a cow, cowboy memorabilia. I say a bunch. There's like one or two. And there's some Texan um, memorabilia. He's like, no, I don't want to show all those like cowboys, blah, 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 talking shit. I'm like, and I went inside and came back outside. I was like, John, hey, your team won. <laughs> it's like, you don't have to keep talking shit about my team. Your team won. They won. They they moved on to just the next round. Keep moving just, on. Just keep, keep on keeping on. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard for it's people. Mm-hmm. It's hard for haters. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> like when when you, when you just become a hater, you're just like I have to keep hating, right? But but when you reach a person that's like higher above, like you, James, uh, you just realize you know you're like, hey, listen, I'm a, I, I got your back, guy. You don't have to hate me to hate your or to love your team, mm-hmm. right? You don't have to hate my team to love your team. <laughs> It just makes it better. Right. Don't right? hate the player, hate the game. That's, That's right. That's the one I'm talking uh, about. Yeah. And I, I do like how you guys uh, totally called me out on my tri tip. We did. So I made that. I made this tri tip, and I think it came out pretty good. And uh, I left it out there until halftime, and then I brought it home with me. <laughs> and it was like <laughs> they're like, "Oh, you just be." I'm like, "Hey, you guys had your chance. I, yeah. I, if you would have eaten all of it, I would have been perfectly happy." So, right. Are you guys like, not like, not met Matt? Like, he do you want the yeah. red pill or the blue pill? He's frugal. Blue pill he's gonna gets, keep his hey, food, and he's gonna hey, eat it for lunch this week. Hey, oh, the I, blue I pill gets <laughs> gets food at home. The red pill gets it for a second, and then gets taken away from them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a, yeah. I mean, it was an yeah. entire. It, it got to room temperature, and I was like, "Okay, I guess nobody else wants anymore." Right, right. nothing not goes to waste. Hey, yeah. Not to mention, we were told like, "Don't cut it until." Yeah, it was so. It was so good. I thought it was. It was good. really good, yeah. man. It yeah. wasn't my best one ever made, but I it, it was good. really good. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the one of the deals that we we talk about a lot on the podcast when we talk about doing tri tips, uh, yeah. and we see a lot of people social media wise that say, "Hey, I'm trying a tri tip," or "I hey, I do this tri tip this way." You ever tried cooking it like a brisket? Uh, have you ever tried to do this right here? And, and uh, we've we've tried all the different methods, and the the mm. method that we have right now that we're doing right now, by far the best. And, and I understand maybe people don't like to the 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 bloody the they don't like the medium rare steak and stuff wow. like that. I don't think you care. Well, you know what the scientific term is for that? They're, they're, they're being a bitch. They're being a bitch. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I don't think they are, James. I, I think it's just a normal conversation you're having, and I don't think anybody's being malicious or anything else. No, no, no yeah. I just think uh, first San Fran fans are. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, oh <laughs> shit, to, we're we're going back there. I did, I did not mean that. I'm just kidding. I think the first time we ever cooked tri tip, yeah, and I and I say we, me and Jan or whatever. Maybe it's it it just me. I cooked it like a brisket. You did. I seasoned it like a brisket. Two hundred and eight degrees. Like brisket. I pulled <laughs> she it was off. Done. Like, hey, you're like. You probed it. I was like, "Ah, oh, damn, that looks tender." And then we tried it. I was like, "Ah, oh, that's horrible." It, I mean, it, it <laughs> wasn't disgusting. it wasn't terrible. I mean, you yeah. you just dry or what? It, it, it was dry. I mean, yeah. it, it tasted like a, just a, a dried out piece of like brisket flat. Yeah, but how many different pieces of protein are are we dealing with on a daily basis or anything else that honestly they, they we're overcooking? Like especially in the beginning, like everybody has this whole first like, "Ah, oh, shit, I I'll, I'll cook that." And then you overcook it. And you're like, oh, that sucked. That's the most right? common fail, right? Overcooking it, whatever it is. You just overcook it. Yeah. And I think it happens so much, honestly, that I think that we could do a better job. We could do a better job as far as like preaching, like, hey, listen, don't get in a hurry. Just reel it back a little bit. Just understand what you're doing, like what type of protein this is, what type of meat this is. And just on it. I, I, I always got scared in the beginning yeah. uh, of cooking. It's like I don't, I don't want to get sick. You know, the, the right. food poisoning that, that, that's thing. That's the thing, right? Nobody wants to get that's sick. What everybody's scared. Everybody's of. They, worried they about undercooking. Get, so yeah. they, they don't want. They yeah. don't want to be um, pooping through a screen door. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants, but here's the deal: Wait, nobody what? wants to, but they all are, right? Because they're all eating horrible food. Besides, <laughs> the, the, the what is happening? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, uh, but. I, I can say uh, well, one, one thing. Uh, one thing, Jess <laughs> We've all done kind of learned us. Mm-hmm. And, and if you're in, in the market of say JP, JP, 
Uh, if you're in the market of cooking beef and steaks more specifically and tri-tip as well, but a lot of the bacteria resides on the outside it's of the, the o- steak. It's the E. coli. So obviously you run a risk if you don't mm. cook any meat to a certain temperature according to the USDA and all that, all that bullshit. What do they know? What do yes. they know? But if you, if, Losers. You, if you don't have just rancid beef just sitting out in your garage and you go cook it, yeah, chances are you're Dude, probably going to get Can you sick. imagine if you had rancid <laughs> beef sitting in your garage <laughs> and you like chopped it up and you're like, who wants burgers? And then like everybody's like, yeah, I mean, I do. I yeah. like my medium rare. I, medium rare, you're like, hey, listen, bro. <laughs> You get well done or you die tonight, right? It's open air age <laughs> yeah. steak. Okay? Right, it's, right. It's a delicacy. That's yeah. disgusting. Hey, There's a reason you will why. eat well done and you will love it because if you don't, you will die tonight. Right. There, there's a right? reason why all these high-end restaurants, yeah. uh, they, they do these dry aged steaks and they send them in this, this, right. this cooler. He said cinnamon. For like <laughs> three months and all this mold and right. bacteria just right. grows on the right, outside, right, yeah. and then they go, and they, hey, hey, I'm just going to cut it off and cook hey, it. Nothing to see here. There's a reason why nobody gets sick. Right. It's because all the bacteria grows on the outside. As long as you cut that dead stuff off, preach. you sear it, you cook it, whatever. Yeah. Now, when you start messing with chicken and pork, now you start right. running you just into died. a different game because yeah. the bacteria and stuff does reside inside of the Unless meat. you get it fresh. Yeah. If you if you kill you go a, in you, hard. you kill a chicken. You one hard. You kill a chicken, cook it. You can have a medium rare piece of chicken if you want. And you're not going to get sick from it. Can you say it but again? It sounds crazy, right? Say it rare, again. Medium you, rare. No, the chicken cook it. You cook still can run chicken. a risk of getting <laughs> some type of parasite. I love that. Yeah. Hey, uh, what type of parasite are we talking about, James? Uh, you guys seen The Last of Us on? Uh... <laughs> oh, shit. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched <laughs> the it fungus, either. man, bro. <laughs> hey, we just like literally that's the end of the population. So you was on, you went deep right in that one. All right. Yeah, that's yeah. what she said. All right, before we go deep dive, deep state, uh, deep steak, deep steak, yeah. nice. Yeah, let's get into the hot off the grill barbecue news. <laughs> Brought to you in part sorry. by Jan Sneeze. Right. Also, Gazoontite. <laughs> barbecue News Magazine and MBBQA. Uh, this spring is going to be an exciting time for barbecue lovers. Why is that, John? Why are you, why are you holding your brother's hand? He's the Gazoontite. Uh, Wiping off the uh, Gazoontite. All kinds of cool shit coming up. Uh, first off, you guys know Loco Cookers? Yeah. They no, make, no, they make no. like the, a lot of the crawfish boilers, and they have the new uh, flat top griddle that's mm-hmm. like you can set the temperature. It's a brand. They see them a lot at Academy, Home Depot. Anyways, Who, they, what is it called? Loco. Loco. L O C O. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They are releasing a 22 inch kettle charcoal grill that is regulated by a built in guru. You know what I'm talking about? Like a smoke guru. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it's going to be uh, this new technology. Be able to smoke and grill from temps 225 to 450 plus. It'll hey, have a what sear new mode. Technology? Are you ta- like electricity or like what new te- <laughs> technology are you talking about? I don't think it's a plug in thing. No, it runs on. It's charcoal. Okay. But it has this guru. I don't know. Maybe you do. Do I know what a guru is, man? Like, okay. Yeah. So that's what's that's what's making it work. Maybe you do plug it in. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm it's actually. Guru. I'm actually. I'm, this is very intriguing. Can we pull this up real quick? I do have a little video yeah. clip yeah. I can I bring up like for a, you. Let's it's get this a going. Fan driven type product. That's yeah. So if you guys can see that video on there. If you're on our on our YouTube, uh, I'm playing a little video Dude, there for you. That is sick. Um, it's cool. It's on a little cart. Uh, it's got a nice uh, uh, little screen it's on 22? it. It's a 22? It's a 22-inch. It's just like a Weber kettle. Uh, the Shed Barbecue had one at their big event this past weekend. Uh, I don't know the exact release date, but it could be as early as uh, mid-February, like yeah. somewhere around Valentine's Day. This video is from uh, Grill Girl Robin, who's that's our, money. our friend on uh, Dude, social media. Check little. her out. But uh, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool idea. I mean, I don't know. Part of me is like, this is really awesome, and part of me is like, I mean, it's a charcoal grill. Yeah. At some point. What else can you do? I don't know. Can it's cool. Just, it's yeah, still cool. Yeah. I would still definitely use it and play with it. I mean, it if somebody yeah. sent us one for free and we got the cookie. <laughs> no, 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 no. We want to play with it for sure. That's not what you want, dude. You you, you, you don't want it for free. Local makes some cool shit, though, and I would be interested in no, trying so, it. So sure. they do. And, and, and honestly, I, I feel like they, they're putting a lot of R&D into this. Oh, for sure. Uh, that's a, that's pretty fucking badass. Yeah, a lot of their stuff's very like, tech forward. The video is just like, I was like, mm, do we need that? I need that. We might need it. I yeah. need that. No, 100%. Need it. Now, I've already said 100% we need that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I agree. Uh, okay, next up, uh, Barbecue uh, Bob, our buddy Barbecue Bob, oh, Bob yeah. Trudnack, is releasing his uh, new pizza dough. It's coming out this mm-hmm. spring, which he, we remember we had him on. We yes, talked about his we, seasonings such, and all this stuff. Such a pizza guy. Yeah. But I, I think you lose it a little bit when you're talking to him, and you don't realize just how much a pizza guy he oh, is. Oh, he's a pizza guy. If you watch it, some it, of his recent videos. Yes. And then once you like get it, you're like... Oh my God! Yeah, this dude it. is putting it out there. Yeah, he's uh, all in. He's it, all in. Yeah, with so yeah. he's got Amazing this new dough uh, recipe. Go check it out. It's a new dry it's powder phenomenal. mix. It's going to be available in the stores. Uh, yeah. High quality Italian yeast. Yeah, uh, and it's going to be. You can use it like a same day dough, or you can do a twenty four hour ferment with it. Mm. Two or three pizzas per box. So really? pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, oh. I think we'll probably try it. Uh, what else we got he, here? He, he he probably is the uh, I, I'm not the most favorite person that I met uh, when I was when we we're at the MBBQA. However, he for me he probably is. He definitely hits home with some some like, certain he things. Was right, just so good and like I, I I I couldn't tell him like how much I really thought about him. Whatever else. I tried to. I think he got it when you tried to hold his hand. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully so at that point. Right? But I, I, don't, I don't think he actually realized like how much fans, like how much a fan I was. He didn't get it. Okay. And, 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 and given the whole conversation and everything else, I was like, dude, I am like this and I'm like this. And I'm like, I'm like oh, my God, I'm such a fanboy. Like what's happening here? <laughs> dude, this dude's so legit. Like – Please follow him. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. and I want to have links to all this stuff in the uh, in the description. A couple more things here. Uh, again, if you're looking to uh, to advance your barbecue skills or, or hook up with some other barbecue folks, that uh, MBBQA con- conference is coming up February fifteenth yep. to nineteenth. Doesn't look like we're going to make it this time. I know we said we we're trying to. Probably not going to happen. Uh, but you can get all the information on that in the link below. However, if you want to send grabbing their brisket. Uh, your donations to make sure that we make it to this. Uh, who am I to we say? We need to look into the camera. Who like am the I? SBCA dogs. Like, like, who am I to say no? <laughs> right? Like, it's honestly 100% we would make it. Uh, it's just a funding problem, and we just fell short this year. Yeah, kind of a scheduling uh, problem, too, hey, for some people. On, yeah, for, yeah, there's plenty of us that have scheduling Definitely. problems, whatever else. I would just tell you right now. Uh, we probably will miss this one. We will not miss any more. It's just that good. Yeah. It's a blast. I honestly wish yeah. we were going because it's super 100%. fun. If you can make it to this thing, so much good information. So many awesome people are going to be there. Yeah. Uh, one more thing, uh, James, I think you got something. Yeah, yeah. One more thing. A big shout out to Matt Gork from Gork Boar's Boys Barbecue. Um, Gork Boar. Man, I like that. He's so, on you. Yeah, let's do that again. Hopefully, John can piece this back together. Nope. Uh, big shout out to Matt Gork and Gork Boys Barbecue on making it onto the next level chef. Uh, this is a Gordon Ramsay cooking show that's fixing, I think it's season two, maybe, uh, that's going to air Super Bowl day after the Super Bowl. Uh, so Matt, uh, we've had on the barbecue, uh, we've had on the, the podcast. We have. Uh, mm-hmm. Super awesome dude. Uh, this is a huge accomplishment and uh, obviously a testament uh, to the passion and the hard work and dedication that he has put into the art of barbecue. And not, not just barbecue, but the actual cooking and grilling and, and what he's put out there. So uh, here at Grabbing the Brisket, uh, we're proud of you. We can't wait to see what you uh, do in the show. Uh, keep it going. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Yeah. Represent that, for that, sure. That's freaking awesome. Hopefully, yeah. we can get him uh, on the show here uh, coming up soon. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm sure he's gonna be booked up for for a minute. Uh, uh, so. Maybe so. Nah, I got his number. I'll text. Let's I'll go. blow him up till he says up. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call him up. Hey, uh, you're arrived. It's time to go. Right. I'm recording this, so you might as well talk <laughs> <Right>. about it. <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, that's all we've got up, uh, for the hot off the grill barbecue news. Um, if you have. Barbecue news. If you have something you want, to, you think we should talk about or be mentioned in a future news segment, uh, let us know. Info at grabmanbrisket.com or any of our social medias or our website, grabthebrisket.com. Yeah. Uh, sure. John? Yes, sir. <laughs> How do you feel about saying grabthebrisket.com? Like, let's give us... Grabthebrisket.com. There it is. There it is. There it is. Sultry. 
It's salt, very, very salty. Are you moving fast? I was waiting for you to hit another what second. What happened here? Guys. Are we, uh, are we going all in? Let's go into the uh, grabbing Let's, the brisket. There it is. James, we have to go. <laughs> grabbing the brisket. Quick, commercial break. Commercial break? <laughs> <Yeah>. Commercial break. <laughs> by Oklahoma Joe's new Rider Deluxe Pellet Grills. Since the company's humble beginnings in 1987, Oklahoma Joe has helped those who appreciate the process and the craft of smoking. What began with Joe Davidson, a member of the Barbecue Hall of Fame, and a dozen hand-built smokers at the Oklahoma State Fair over 30 years ago, has since forged an Oklahoma Joe's brand that builds some of the most sought-after smokers. Oklahoma Joe has a proud history of creating uncompromising smokers and grills with carefully crafted design. And the newest generation of the popular Ryder Series pellet grills carries on this tradition. The new features in the Oklahoma Joe's Ryder Deluxe pellet grills include a pit control 2.0 system that delivers the category's first dual sensor temperature control. Fire focus dual sensor feedback optimizes temperature control based on selected cooking styles low and slow smoking, or high heat grilling. A power feed system that boasts the high torque auger motor that powers through pellets for incredible power and performance. The new Rider Deluxe series builds on several popular features, including smoke and sear modes, which features an impressive temperature range that runs from 200 degrees Fahrenheit to a searing hot 650 degrees Fahrenheit, and a 20-pound quick-draw hopper that allows unused pellets to be drained in seconds for That's simple storage, beer, removal, that. and swapping of pellet flavors. Guys, if you want to find out more information about the new Rider Deluxe Series pellet grills from Oklahoma Joe, check out the Oklahoma Joe's website, and the link is in our description in the bio, and that's oklahomajoe.com. Hey, I'm Lauren. And I'm John. And we host the Beard Out Podcast, the podcast where we talk about two of the greatest things in the world, beer and Beard Out. And a lot of other things. We're funny. Uh, yeah, that's basically what I told him to say. Good job with your I script. I listen. Yay. Uh, but no, seriously, we try and pair a beer with a Weird Al song and talk about both things and go where the conversation takes us. It's fun. I promise. You'll like it. Yeah. I mean... If you like talking Let's about go. random things as well as, you know, fine craft beers and some wonderful craft music. I'm Pantsless Aaron. This is Stevie. And I'm Augie. And we are BFYTW, a podcast all about playing games and having fun. Our games are usually based on British panel shows and game shows, but we'll play anything that captures our attention and imagination. Why? It's right there in the title. You'll never guess what the F stands for. Boom, let's talk brisket bark. Why would you not? I mean, obviously it looks awesome, but that's where the flavor is, too. Can we just talk about, like, how much flavor is packed in the bark versus how much flavor is, like, it's on you? 100%. Yeah. Like, 100% are, are we how much? into... Like how much? Are we getting into bark formation or are we going to the grab and the brisket? Beer review. I feel like that was forced. <laughs> Jesus. John came we with went like, that route. Okay. I feel like we're, we're just hey like, guys, uh, I feel like look, in the script we're going to go. The liquid never lies. My bad. Uh, I'm That's jumping the script. Key. Everybody's like popping <laughs> beers over here. Like I figure. Yeah, I was okay. confused too, hey. but nobody said anything. So I thought I'll just stick to the script. The liquid <laughs> never lies. Okay, exactly. perfect. Let's so, do the beer review. Uh, let's get this it out is of the way. Uh, this is Jesus. another one from Abita Brewing. Yeah. We've done Abita. Yeah, we've done a couple. They're from uh, somewhere in Louisiana. Oh my God. And this is uh, no idea. Does anybody have any favorite Mardi Gras stories? Like this is a Mardi, Mardi Gras Bach. So we do a lot of Bach beers, but I don't think I've had one that's not from Texas. Bach so. to see you. Uh huh. Mother Bacher. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> now, at, at what point in time, what age do you get to where you just stop going out and celebrating Mardi Gras? I've literally right. never celebrated Honestly? Mardi Gras. Never? I bought a king cake once. <laughs> about <laughs> until I swallowed the about baby. About the age of 20. 
30. <laughs> Does that about the age of 70? Day. No, the age of 90. Yeah, you never get done. Here, here, here's the thing. You're a champion. Not First of all, you're a champion because you said you were a champion because you live a champion lifestyle. It ain't because of whatever else. But 100%, yes, it's 100% each one of y'all's faults for not being a champion. Hmm. Right. What? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> a champion in the the case of like trying to be like this. Uh, am I saying this wrong? Yeah, I'm a little fucked up. I have no idea what you're saying. Yeah. So, well, but we can go, go back yourself. to we can circle back around to yeah. Mardi Gras is all about seeing boobies. No, <laughs> it's not about seeing it's boobies. Boobies and it's, beers. It's not. Sorry, it's, John's mom. It's <laughs> no John's mom. There's, there's, also, there's also a, this. a cake that's like a giant donut. So. That's the only part I King really Kate. celebrate. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I literally You're have ta- no idea. <laughs> you have no idea what you have no idea what this means. I don't know what anybody's talking about, honestly. Jesus Christ. I Look, do understand that Mardi Gras means people it. put their boobs for everyone to see. It's about that beads and boobs and beards. No, it's not. Triple beads. You missed it. It's like Guy Fieri. It's no. Like you said a D's. dude's name, but I don't even know who the fuck is. Diamonds and Dives. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mardi Gras side. This sounds Let, let's get right, into the awesome. grab of the brisket. I don't think, beer, I don't, I don't think I've more. ever like been Welcome so beer, just like beads and boobs. I honestly, right. I just don't think I ever felt this way about you guys. Y'all just disappointed me so bad. Like you have no. Like if you're saying what you're saying, it literally means you have no idea what the fuck. Okay, what is it about? It's Tell a us. Christian holiday. It's a what? One hundred percent. It's a Christian holiday. It's a Christian holiday. Yeah, a Catholic like celebrated one predominantly, but yeah. yeah. And somehow really? it kind of got hijacked a little bit. But I need uh, to go. To it doesn't Catholic matter why it got hijacked. It just got <laughs> I'm just hijacked. It did. And thank, thankfully so, <laughs> right? But like, what are you? What? 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 Okay, is what does it mean here? to you, Jan? Tell us. I want to know this. I want to hear now. Well, I don't know. You know yeah. uh, <laughs> no, it. it, it Actually, it means way more than what y'all are. Like, it, it means family. It means uh, food. Like, the, the, food. The, okay, I can yeah, get behind the, that. The, the, these are. It's about speed. It's about power. It's well. It's, <laughs> no, no it's, you're so dumb. Go fuck yourself. I got it. I like, got it. I, you know what? I don't have to explain it. <laughs> the rock over here. The fact that that I actually, I actually have a a soul. Mm-hmm. Should tell y'all. Yeah. Like, I hear what you're saying. Like, there's yeah. two, two, there's two factions. There's people who celebrate Mardi Gras, right, to be with family and to celebrate food right. and to whatever, do, do a crawfish boil and, and, and do drink boils, some beer and yeah. drink beers yeah. and do whatever. And then there's That's the other cool. faction. Well, what are you where talking about? They just want beads and they want uh, boobs titties and they just want. Talk about titties. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Great titties. Titties. Can we stop saying boobs and titties? My mom watches these. <laughs> I, sorry, we mom. already said I, sorry. Mom, we already sorry. Said sorry. I, mom, fast disregard, forward like five disregard. minutes. Disregard. Let's get on to Albita. We're not trying to yeah. disrespect Albita. No, it's not. Uh, I think Albeda. it's Albita. There's no. I, I'm Albeda. just saying. Albeda. There's a time and place. Albeda. But dude, there's a time and place. Okay, so Enjoy. we will we will try to put out some or Jan will put out some content for us on some some Mardi Gras grub. Is it? One percent. Okay. You know what? One percent. Next week, I want you to. One next week, please look for the Mardi Gras grub. Are you saying grub or a way of yes. life? Grub, way of life. Okay, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, food. I'm talking about food. Just, just look for my new recipes, the Mardi Gras recipes, and tell me how unauthentic or how authentic it is. Let's go. Let's do like some jalapeno poppers with boudin. Would that count? Maybe some shrimp in it. As long as you put. A little plastic baby Jesus inside of the jalapeno. You're being bottle. very uh, derogatory right now. That's no, it's kinky. not. I, it is I, not I, derogatory. I don't really think about what's happening right, right now. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's, this beer let's, is let's good. Digress. I like to Go drink back. it. Yeah. This is a good beer. Uh, what is it called? It's called Mardi Gras Bach. Ah, it's a Bach, Jan. A Bach. It's Jan's favorite type of beer. What are you doing? He's handing you the beer. Take the beer. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I had, thought I had one in front of me. Um. Right, uh, so I, six. It's point, a tasty beer. Six point five percent alcohol volume. Uh, says uh, brewed and bottled by Abita Brewing, which Abita is a uh, uh, Louisiana company. Um, mm-hmm. Dude, uh, 
It's the bottle, a, a the bottle feels good. The bottle feels good in your hand. It feels like you're about to get dirty. It feels like you're about to get like scent a little bit, right? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You know what scent means? It's about to get a little just like, eh. Like you're about little, to like throw uh, some <laughs> little nasty. at you. Yeah. Hey, it's on the shape hey, of the bottle or who's the look? Got, who's got a baby in that king cake? Let's eat one. Let's go. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, how does it taste? I think it tastes fantastic. This it, is a it, great tasting it box. It tastes like a Shiner Bach. This is an awesome beer, for sure. It's got a little twang mm. to it. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's not good. This is a good beer. This is a very good beer. It's very just very heavy. Yeah, it's a Bach. Mm-hmm. So it tastes like a Bach. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> nice amber color. Yeah, color's yeah, great. It's very amber. I'll, I'll go first. I'm gonna get this. I was up. about yeah. to say. This is, uh, I want John to go first. Yeah, this has got a great flavor. It's it's heavy enough to have some flavors. This is it's a good box. I don't know. We've had a lot of good box, but I'm gonna go. Yeah. What do you like eight, about this? I'm gonna go eight point six. This is what do you like beer. about this beer, John? That's exactly. The I like the flavor. It. Yeah, tell me though. Yeah, uh, it's got a nice. Uh, I mean, it's, I don't know, how, do you, how do you describe Aromatic. it? It's, uh, no. Like it has a nice what? Just taste no, it. No, it's not. Tell us what you like. I'll tell you what I like about it. No, I don't ask you. It's got that. Hey, toast first of all, I didn't, on it. I didn't ask you. It's not boozy, and it's, it's also got a down twang nope. I just, on the back. I just want to talk to John about this. John, what do you like about this beer? It's delicious because it's good to drink. <laughs> okay, I love this. It's a uh, valid. It's a valid method of hey, judging a beer. There's nothing uh, wrong. <laughs> Matthew, yeah. <laughs> what do you like about this beer? I love the toasty little flavor to it. Ooh, I love how uh, there's just a little bit of like a little tingle you get on the back of your throat. Just okay. that little, just a little bit that's, of bite, you know. Little, you can tell because of the little elevated alcohol okay. content. No, content. I'm, I'm like, are you I'm feeling that? Are you I, getting that too? Yes, one hundred percent. That's why I'm saying. I like how you're describing this. And then I don't know what the Mardi Gras flavor is. Yeah. In it. I can tell mm. there's something there. Like, if you're like, I what is like a Mardi Gras flavor? Yeah. I I like it. Can you explain more of this Mardi like Gras? Plastic yeah. uh, beads and okay. boob sweat, well, I think, is crazy. what goes in there. Yeah. Okay. But there's something yeah. in there I can't describe, but All it's right. a little... Yeah, uh, that is boob sweat. That is what you're John? tasting. Yeah. Are you feeling the same boob sweat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, honestly, uh, I, I actually do like the way you depicted it. This is a great uh, beer. It is a great beer. This is a really, really good beer. And God bless Louisiana. I want to do a super cut of every beer review we've ever done. Where John says, this is a good beer. There's a lot this of is them. a great beer. Most <laughs> of them. I just want to see a super cut of all of that. There's only a few beers that are like, this is not a good beer. <laughs> yeah. That's true. We had one uh, in our, our That's beer special. No, it may be true for one of us, but it's not true for all of us. No, 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 no. There's, you're right. right. James has said, this is a shitty beer a yeah, lot of times. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I've probably said it less I, I than anybody. I guess I rephrase it. There's now, only been rephrase it, James. a few beers that John didn't like. <laughs> There's also yeah. only and been a few beers that I've been like, It's a great rephrasal. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm mm-hmm. very much middle of the road. You're yeah. right. I was looking at this the other day, our, our stats, which but is quite important. There's a few beers that we all just have You need to get out of your comfort zone. I like, drink a lot of fucking do, beers. I don't know. What could do better? I'm going to just like, go just jump right in there. 8.6. That's, That's what, what I said. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I said, you just, you're a bastard, James. Did you say 8.6? I said 8.6. 8.6. We're going 8.6. This is all around oh, the board. Now, now Jan's going to ruin it. Oh, ruin it, Jan. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin it. <laughs> I mean, 8.65. You, know you can't ruin it when you give it your normal type of, like... Honesty? Yeah. Right? You can't ruin anything. What do you think of it? When you're honest, you can't be ruined. Do you like right? it? Yeah. What he do you like about it? it? He likes it. Other than the way the bottle feels in your hand. Right. Got a little stubby bottle. That's what Jess Prowls taught us earlier today on TikTok. She did? Yeah. Stubby? Like stubby. Yes. Hey, can I get a stubby? <laughs> and it refers to uh, beer bottles and... Penises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know. <laughs> They're okay. beer bottles. In Australia, they have a little stubby neck. Hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. what do you like about it, Jan? I want to know. I want okay. the specifics. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, uh, well, so I like a lot of things about this beer. Mm-hmm. One is that it it just feels good, right? It's a really good feel good beer, and I think a lot of times that when we're d- doing this stuff and we're running around and and everybody has their own scores. But nobody actually says this is a feel good beer. This is a beer that you can drink. Now, with that being said, the only problem is that they don't put it out like one time a year. Right. With that being said, I feel like it's the last time I want to have this beer. 
And, and that's what I don't like about it. So, this is a 7-7 seven, seven for me. Okay. Respectable seven, score. 7-7. Seven. Yeah, that's fine. I like yeah. this enough. That it's a good beer. If it's, I, yeah, I'm going to be looking for it when I go out to drink. Like, if, see if they have it on tap or not or something. Dude, this might yeah. be really I, good. I, I like but that. it's a good beer. Yeah. 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 Although, I will say, you said we won't have it again. I would say probably 80, say 80% of our beers, we probably won't have again. I just said it's 7-7. Seven, seven. I didn't say I wouldn't have it again. Didn't he say right before that you probably no, won't you have it again? No, you just it. No, no, you said it. Did I? I think yeah. so. We go said I would never have Hold this on, beer I'll again. Play. No, you didn't say it like that. You did not say it like that. You're right. You go said the, uh, I probably won't have it again. No, so, what, so, what's the TV like it won't be available again. Pull so, out the red flag challenge. So, I, I, <laughs> so you're right. You're, John, flag. Jonathan, you're, you're right. Because you know why? I, I'm not going to go order the beer. I'm not going to go like, what, once I've tasted it, somebody's like, hey, you want a Mardi Gras from, what, from Abita? I'm like, uh, actually, I've already had that. Can I have something different? One hundred percent. I will never say Coors Light. Boom. No, James. Just kidding. <laughs> I would just drink that at the very end of the night. Do you have anything with a mountain from I think, I think what yeah. I would say. Right. I, I think I, I like Shiner yes. Bach better. Would you say that I like Shiner Bach better than this? But I would like to mix up that regular rotation. Well, I don't think this by is a Bach. This every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I don't think this is a Bach. No. I think this is very Bach. I think it's Bach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good thing about this. It's uh, not my Bach. Podcast that, that yeah. it's hey, actually a go barbecue yourself. podcast, That's not, not a beer podcast, <laughs> right? Okay, we're not going to go forty minutes into. Yeah. You into know what? Grabbing the well, you know why? Beer, beer review. We used to have the ninety second beer review, and it worked. Yeah, but we never win ninety seconds. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's not our fault, James. That's that's their fault. <laughs> it's the man's fault. All right, we're diving into the deep dark. Secrets yeah. of barbecue Oof. and, and Dude, what I am more imagine? specifically talking about: bark formation. Hey, Matt, huh? can you imagine what the deep dark thing for barbecue? Like, I can imagine it, but I can't wait to figure out what like James deep, has. It's state. so titillating. I just cannot deep wait. State, yeah, brisket. Let me see. Titillating, James. Skintillating. Yeah, these guys don't even know. There's like, there's Dude. like. Documents Can you hidden swear at to God. everybody's house that are classified and is swear just being discovered everywhere. Do you swear to God. Cut the video feed, John. If you, you can't swear to have God right now, James, I will sure. believe you. And one, two, three, dead air. And we're back again. <laughs> Did you just get errors? Go fuck. Okay, so we're getting back yeah. with the uh, topic of the day is bark formation and the. Uh, secondary type deals is spritzing your meat. Yeah. How that affects your bark. <laughs> right. Hey. We're, we already How know. Well, hey. <laughs> I can't even laugh about that. Just go, James. Okay. Go. I'm going to yeah. run with it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, right off the bat. So trimming your brisket, and we're, mm-hmm. we're going to start with brisket. You, you, this can correlate with any type of meat. Trim meat. Trim your meat. Make sure it looks the best that it can be. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. Um, and then from there, obviously like the use of like dry rubs, dry rubs. You're not going to bark with Adam. Yeah. You, you're not, you can't use liquid marinades and you can't, and you're going to develop a nice bark. The, the, the type of stuff that we talked about earlier where we're, um, I think me and John jumped, jumped on live broadcast and we're talking about, it. you have to have coarse seasonings, black pepper, can't stop yourself. Yeah, uh, that that's the only way you're going to develop a nice nice bark, or whatever. I don't know what I'm saying, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Drunk. There's a whatever. lot of whatever. And put that coarse seasoning on last. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Sure do, you, sure do you like that coarse seasoning? Of course. Like, <laughs> like if we actually, listen, let's be honest. If you were listening to this podcast and you heard the words... Sure did like that coarse seasonings. Mm-hmm. Just find a different podcast because this is not the one for you. Like this right. is going to be some negative shit. I'm just saying. Like you just put the lotion in the baskets right. and just like right. reel it right. back up. James, again. you're hearing what <laughs> I'm saying right we'll now. Be good. If you hear these words, <laughs> right. just know you went too far. Right. Like so, go home, just pray a little bit, and come back and go like, ah, babe. I had it all wrong. Correct. These guys are lunatics. So <laughs> something. 
getting getting into developing a bark for your brisket. So you have the central Texas style of cooking a brisket yeah. or cooking any type of protein whatsoever. And it's like layer it with heavily with kosher salt and black pepper. Right. All day. Two to one, you, pretty that's much. That's how right? you create that bark. So I, and I think that goes with everything. Yeah, that's great. But you can also add, add other different seasonings. But I think we could talk about maybe more specifically what kills barks. What are the bark killers? Yes, sir. So that is a great point because I don't think anybody talks about that. Mm-hmm. Nobody talks about like, like what kills this? What kills my bark? What kills this this mojo that I have going on or whatever else? Nobody talks about any of that. Yeah. And, 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 and you're just sit there like forced to go. Oh yeah, I, this is this is me. This is not me. This is. Oh, I, I I did this once. Or you're eight hours into it. Go, go out. I think the biggest or, bark killer is wrapping too early. Yeah, I was like, you're you're eight hours into a brisket. But cook, honestly, is it? And the bark 100%. looks so beautiful. So yeah. so it's like and you go wrap it with tin foil. Yeah. You you add a little liquid into it, and then next thing you know, you so John, you pull it off a little bit later, and you open up the tin foil, and everything is just mush. Soggy. Yeah. Soggy. Soggy, yeah. Soggy mush. Right, Jonathan. Do you think it's the only key right there? The only key, no. I think it's the most important one. Is what? If you wrap it too early. So many people are, have got this 165 stuck in their head. Sometimes it's not ready. It's not time to wrap yet. You so what is the 165? People think that you need to wrap your brisket right when it hits 165. Right? Yeah. Like we've all heard it a thousand times. 165, yeah. that's when you wrap. Sometimes that bark's not set up enough. If it's not set up enough, set up, shaba 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 oh, shaba shaba. If it's shabba, not shabba. set up, yes. when you wrap it, especially if you're especially if you're using foil, right? What happens? It's, it's, it's not going to breathe. It's just going to turn to mush. That's right. You need that bark to be that's right. Pretty it's damn a firm, steam bath especially in there. yeah. Right. Yeah. First of all, if you're doing that, you're not doing yourself any justice. You're just being a lame person that followed somebody else's bullshit. Right. And you're sitting there going like, "Why did my shit work out the way it was supposed right. to?" It's go? the same people that are pulling right at two hundred. Exactly. Yeah. But why are they doing that? Because somebody Cause said that. Because somebody do it. said you have to cook barbecue this way, and and I think that is a big message, bro. Cook your own barbecue. Right. Be your, your own your person. That's listen it. to yourself. But honestly, yes, one hundred percent, John. Listen to your meat, and and and. It's no masturbation type whatever. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Nobody was listen. thinking that, Tim. Well, we all were, right? <laughs> masturbation is great. I'm just saying, just listen to your shit, <laughs> dude. Sorry, John's mom. Because, yeah, I'm sorry, John's mom. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, uh, just, I, I, I think it's bigger than what you think it is. And I think that more people dismiss, right? Everybody's dismissing somebody else and doing their own thing. But I, I honestly think that if you're out there trying to put out the best thing you can do, right? This it's, it, this is the uncomfortable conversation you have to have, right? Right. And, and, and I, mm-hmm. I, I know it sounds dumb. I know it sounds whatever. But at the same time, we all looked or sounded retarded trying to. I probably can't say that. That's probably a horrible word to say. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just saying that. It all gets us, right? Right, and, right. And, and the, the, it's social media and even before that, just with the, the chat rooms and whatnot, they've set 100%. up this, this, these universal guidelines, these universal rules. You have to do this. You have to, and it's not, that's you just don't not how it's supposed to be just, just guidelines. Just, right, exactly. Just, just guidelines. be yourself just yeah. a little bit and put yourself out there and then own it. And that's the hard part. You have to own it. Right. Unless sure. it's like really shitty ass brisket, then don't own that. No, don't I mean, own you that. can, hey, but that's like where, man. James I don't is know 100% correct. <laughs> that is the worst brisket that I ever said in my life. Kroger <laughs> sold me that shit. Gross. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. And I'll right. tell you right now another little, little tidbit. If you cook a brisket and it comes out okay, but right. a little slightly tough. Don't tell me about it. Just blame it on the meat. Yeah. It's probably just the Pro meat. tip. I came from HEB. You're like, just say something. Stupid Randall's. Other than Randall's, yeah. Randall's brisket. Right. Look at that at I the Walmart. Brisket. I got my brisket at Aldi. That's so funny. James goes <laughs> Randall's. I'm like, uh, Hillshire Farm. I was already thinking Randall's. Right. Yeah. That's funny. But uh, obviously, there's a lot of like uh, different uh, 
uh, and I have a lot of stuff written down. It's like as far as developing barks yeah. for your brisket. That's right. One key is like, okay, you can spritz. You can spritz while you're you developing spritz all the bark. Spritz. Uh, just don't over spritz. Correct. Yeah, you can't just, don't, just like don't look at me when you do it. Yeah. yeah. You can't just keep opening the lid every no. like yeah. twenty minutes. Hey, you want to keep stuff. opening the lid? You'll never looking at me while I spritz. You'll never develop a bark. Or Shame whatever. on you. Uh, so it, that's one of the kind of the keys. Like for us, use nice coarse seasonings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, don't spritz a shit ton. <laughs> right. 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 Like I and spritz. Then, I don't. I don't start until. A minimum two hours, usually three hours. I'm letting that thing yeah. just go, not even opening that shit up until it's been at least a couple hours, and then I'll open it up and see if it needs a spritz. Yeah, Jonathan, I, I took you're a, probably uh, the best cook I've ever met in my life. Shut the only, fuck because, true. only because, only <laughs> because, uh, honestly, seriously, because because you take it all to heart, but you will do what you want to do, and you just meander through it, and it, it, it's very weird because you don't let anybody else fade you. No, no, like you I could do say it works for me. No, that's you, what everyone should do. That's that's why you're so good. Mm. You don't care. So I, right? uh, this is true. If I can yeah, it is true. I know it is a little yeah. bit. Uh, so I took a master <laughs> class. Yeah, interject with, with John. Uh, Tell John he's not the best. He's the best. Is. That's hurtful, James. Why you're would you say best. that? Why are you Why are you doing this, James? Everybody, just, everybody's the best. Just making a comment. <laughs> or, the best. But I, I took a master class with Aaron Frank Franklin. And, and talking there? about uh, developing bark and doing whatever, it, it's you don't touch the brisket, you don't open the smoker, you for like three hours. Mm. Mm-hmm. Let true. it develop mm-hmm. I before you come in and in in the video that that I saw, you open it up, you check it out. Uh, there might be some little ends little bits that might be burning a little bit or might get a little more color than everything else. Color station. Those are the bits you spray. Yeah, that makes rest, sense. You just Love let that. go. So you want that whole thing to develop that whole bar. I really like that. I never even thought about that because you're right, especially when you're cooking on an offset where all the heat's coming from one side. It's it's going to darken on one side or one mm-hmm. end more. You know, It's going to work its way across, right? So that makes yeah. sense to just spritz the part that needs it. That's I've never true. even thought of that. That's true. I mean, that's what I've always done. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, what? Why you spritz? Because it needs some moisture, right? Right. So you don't add moisture where there's already moisture. That's true. You but I've, I've always wood. just right. been a who would do that? <laughs> yeah. So, so idiots. Moisture. What, what do they know? Morons. <laughs> uh, does it matter what you're spritzing with? Yeah. It, it doesn't matter, and I, no, I got tap James. waters. Tap and, waters and is first, way to go. I, I got a couple. More, like, I got a couple suggestions. Why are you thinking it is? What? Why do you think it matters? I, I said it doesn't. No, but, but why do you think it does? He said it doesn't. It does. <laughs> Wait, it does? Or it doesn't. It does. Doesn't. I don't know why you're grilling me. Uh, let, let's get into. No pun okay, so, uh, I'll just. I'm trying to grill, bro. I, I don't know. You're like fucking Diane Sawyer over here just trying to fucking do 2020. It's still here. 2020 is still a thing. I love it. Okay. There are a couple of things. So, uh, I'm going to sneeze. Apple juice, mm-hmm. butter, mm-hmm. beer, mm-hmm. and probably anything butter vinegar. Beer. vinegar. Pickle, just say pickle juice. Pickle juice. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I've, I heard people that do like a, a apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, pickle they'll, juice, They'll mix it whatever. with like a beef broth or something like that. Uh, yeah, that vinegar helps kind of break down the meat yeah. itself. Yeah. Uh, apple juice obviously has a whole lot of sugar in it. So it, it can burn depending on what you're trying it's to do. It's going to probably darken your bark, right? Yeah. A little caramelization it, it will darken your bark for sure. Are you okay? Bro? I have the uh, hiccups. I am li- literally Deal. going to like. Did you pregame? Hiccup uh, plenty. Uh, no. 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 Uh, God bless. Uh, uh, right. Maybe. Anybody uh, out there at. Uh, shit. shit. We. <sighs> God damn it. <laughs> right. Jan's hiccuping. I'm hiccuping right now. Obviously, uh, we're not like the foremost experts yeah. on cooking barbecue or doing uh, anything like that. We're not like the that. foremost yeah. experts we, on we, anything. We, we try we're to second the, most. We try to put the information <laughs> out there. But Son anybody out there that has any questions, please come back, ask. Uh, we're, we're more than um, 
I guess you would say, happy to to delve into any type of topics that you might have. We take happy to help. We take rotations sitting at this table twenty four seven on our hotline, ready for people to call right. in if they have barbecue questions. And we're yeah. if, if, if it's for not sure, if they if that's not setting, you just call in. We'll let you know. Yeah. yeah. But all, hmm. also, if you do call in, if yeah. you do leave us a message. On our barbecue hotline, whether it's a, a story or whether it's a barbecue win or fail, whatever, uh, let us know. You can win yourself a bottle of Suckle Busters seasoning. Yes. And I think, John, John, do we have a we do. candidate tonight? Suckle Busters, Suckle Busters. Everybody, Everybody wants some, some suckle buster. All right, you guys ready for this? Yes. And there is some video for this. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, we're watching. Uh, tune into the YouTube. And there is some audio. So if you guys can't hear it, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, I didn't quite make it to my destination today. Truck jackknifed. Smoker ended up on the bed of the truck. Was able to get it off. This is what I have left. Now it's time to get a chain to get it pulled back over and back to the house. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Yeah, that's our boy, uh, LES BBQ. Uh, he's on all the social medias. I'll, I'll tag him down below so you guys can find him. But uh, and I'll show you one more little video that he, he posted the next day. Uh, he, uh, maybe he posted it the same day. It was a follow-up video. We got the pit back home. I appreciate everybody's concern. Uh, everybody's prayers it ain't no stopping man this train gonna continue to roll i got a big cookout wednesday coming and it's on again i'm out dude i love this so yeah Yeah. his uh his his smoker jackknifed jackknife going to wherever upside down not upside down but just like yeah messed up laid over that's crazy i talked to him two days later he was already cooking he was yeah he was already back at he's like nah that's just not not stopping me me. yeah i love this guy hey Mm. Get this guy a cooking channel. Let's go. Yeah, well, he's <laughs> killing it on social media. Yeah. This dude's got like 300,000 followers or some shit on TikTok. So uh, he's killing it. Check him out. I'll tag him below. But uh, he is going to win some. Suckle Busters. Suckle Busters. Everybody wants some Suckle Buster. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am so like in a remix or what? Yeah. That's weird. Uh, <laughs> That's weird. So bad. <laughs> you showed up like just totally sober. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate well, that. Time to go. Bye. Yeah. yeah. He seemed fine when he got here. That's super weird. LES. Yeah. LES what? BBQ. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho. And we're back with the grabbing the brisket. Do do we have a? That was the barbecue fail. That was yeah. That was the yeah, fail. Man, I, I don't think you can. That was a pretty bad I one. Get Keep any worse than that? That's a rough know, one. I know we've seen some bad ones, but uh, obviously, yeah. Yeah, people out there in the uh, the the lands, the grabbing the brisket lands. If you guys have a barbecue win, fail, or a story, uh, please. Wow. Shoot us a video. Let us know. We'll put you on the show. If we feature it, and you guys are going to win a bottle of Suckle Busters yep. rub. Or you can leave us a little voicemail. Our hotline number is 434-829-2299. Or, uh, yeah, you can email us. You can find that link on our website, grabthebrisket.com. Love it. Hey, as always, it's been great talking barbecue with you guys. Peace. Thanks, everybody. We've been great. Jeez. Dang it, Bobby. Just grab the brisket. We'd like to give a special thanks to Suckle Busters Barbecue Rubs and Sauces, Bonner's Fiesta Spices, Cooley Nation Custom Koozies, Cambro Manufacturing, Yeti Coolers, The Smoke Sheet Barbecue Newsletter, and Dow Strong Knives. We definitely appreciate your support.